This is Don Mazzella here with uh, Small Business Digest on a, a day which, like many Americans, I'm recovering from the third COVID shot. So you'll have to excuse me today. But uh, I have uh, with us John Matusak. And I have to tell you people, we did a terrible thing. Somehow or other, when we did this show about uh, uh, two months ago, we had a great one, but we lost it. You know, uh, the, the gremlins were at work. But I'm glad because uh, John's had two month, months more to tell us more about progress in which I think he has a, a, a really great idea, which I'll let him tell you about. But first, we want to welcome him to the program and ask him to tell us Again, a little bit about his personal background, about his company, and finally a website, because I'm I'm sure you're going to find this very interesting. Go ahead, John. So, Take me out of here. So thank you, Don. Thank you, Don, for uh, having me back. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity and particularly the chance to speak directly uh, to the Small Business Digest uh, audience. So uh, my background is in the production delivery of technology services. Uh, I worked for a, a couple of different firms, Time Inc. at the start, and then a privately held uh, company that we built from about 1 million up to 60 million. And I was a COO there for about a decade. And we built marketing databases and did predictive modeling and all the stuff that you hear about today. So we were big data before it was big and analytics before it was analytics. And then, um, more recently, I was approached by the uh, investors in EATLAS uh, late in 2019, asking if I would uh, take that venture and, and work with them to get it launched and off the ground and, and into the marketplace, which I gladly accepted. So I sort of changed course from a fairly conventional corporate career uh, to the world of being an entrepreneur. And uh, as I'm sure most of your listeners know, that is a very different world indeed. So eAtlas is a mobile app and platform that enables people virtually anywhere in the, uh, in the world to enjoy uh, guided tours, treasure hunts, and similar experiences on demand from their mobile phone. So these aren't virtual experiences. You're not sitting on your couch looking at the Sistine Chapel. You're instead going to the Sistine Chapel and doing a tour in the area surrounding it. And these eAtlas experiences, as we call them, are built by content specialists that we call woe guides. These are current and former tour guides, anybody with a deep knowledge about a particular place, it's art, it's history, it's architecture, it's sports, and a desire to share what they love about it. So our platform, which is the other half of eAtlas, enables those woe guides to assemble their content, audio clips, video clips, texts, pictures, and the like, and distribute it uh, into the app in a compelling format so you or any member, any friend of yours or family member could go on one of our eAtlas experiences whenever they wanted right from their mobile phone. I have to, I have to tell you, John, when I first heard about it, I thought it was a great idea, and I still think it is. So now um, let's, let's start. You basically... Um, like, for instance, I grew up in Newark, and I know all of the places that that the um, the Sopranos are supposedly uh, involved with. If I wanted to go to Newark and put together a program and show uh, this is the, the shop where you shot, et cetera, I would come to you, and what would I do, and, and how would we work together? So it's quite simple, actually. Um, you would uh, go out to our website, which is playeatlas.com, and you would submit an inquiry there to us. Um, and we would receive that in, in an email, and we would contact you uh, as quickly as we could and say, hey, can we get together and talk about how to get you onto our platform? And that's, again, a very simple thing. We simply send you an email invite, you click on the link in the email, and now you have your own, what we call portal, in which you can create whatever you like about Newark, about Berlin, about Miami, Chicago, New York, really anywhere in the world. And from there, you simply assemble your content, you put it into the templates that are pre-built for you. Um, most every field in that, 
in that portal or platform has a little information icon to help you along the way. It's extremely easy, as we like to say, uh, we made it easy, but our role guides make it amazing. And that portal or platform enables you to share everything you love about Newark. It's special pizza places, it's special uh, restaurants, the special history surrounding it, anything at all in there. And you assemble a tour or a treasure hunt or a hybrid of the two that enables the folks in Newark to enjoy anywhere from 45 minutes to two hours of walking through the town, seeing the sights, and they see the world sort of through your eyes, Don, or through the Woe Guide's eyes, and they learn something new about a place, even if they're longtime residents and think they knew everything there is to know about it. Uh, in each of our experiences, we're confident even longtime residents will learn something new uh, about a place that they also love. Uh, Don, I think you may have been muted briefly. I didn't oh, well, hear you I'm, at all. I made myself because uh, I don't want to cough into you. Sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, how do I get paid? How do you charge? And more importantly, how do you let people know about all, all of this? So um, part of the sort of central theme uh, of eAtlas is sharing, right? We've got these woe guides, these people with a lot of knowledge about a particular place, and they want to share what they love about that place. And then we've got the consumers out there who are a curious bunch. They want to learn about uh, a given place, be entertained, spend some time there and learn about it. And so while the world guides are sharing what they love, if you down were to purchase uh, a tour that, that a world guide had built of Newark for, let's say, $10, 70% of that or $7 goes back to the world guide that built it. So they share what they love. We share the revenue. We take care of the payment processing fees. So most of our... Most of our experiences present are for a fee. It averages about $10. Uh, as we like to say, uh, mighty tours, mini prices. Um, but many of them are also free. And it's the Woe Guide that decides what to price it at. It can be free, it could be $2, it could be $20. But again, it's usually about $10. And the second part of your question, Don? Um, well, how do you now go out and tell people about the world? Yep. So um, we decided to launch in Chicago because we're all from Chicago proper, the surrounding area. Um, and it was just made sense to us to sort of prove our concept here and then expand uh, both within the US and ultimately uh, globally. So we've launched digital marketing campaigns with all the traditional features, display ads and geofencing and email and all the usual channels. Uh, we're doing um, uh, events we're exhibiting at festivals uh, in the area uh, and events. We've got a PR firm that helps us uh, get engagement with uh, the media and, and, and print interviews, radio interviews, TV interviews. We've done all the conventional stuff. What we found, uh, Don, is that um, raising awareness is one part and a critical part of the equation. And we think we've done that fairly successful in the Chicago area. Um, Getting actual activity, which in our case means downloading the app, which is free, by the way, and then registering, and then actually participating in the Atlas experience. That's the larger challenge. Um, and that's what we're focused on now is how do we get people to, to routinely participate, use the app, go on these experiences, learn how cool they are and, and enjoy themselves. So we're, we're, we're busily, um, launching various promotions. We're discounting some of the experiences. We may make more of them free. We're using every technique we can think of to get people to participate. But as with many businesses, that's, that's the challenge, right? It's, it's about getting the revenue, making the sales. We also have found that the partner channel, as we call it, uh, is, is working out pretty well for us. So for example, you, you've probably heard of Navy Pier uh, in Chicago. It's a tremendous tourist attraction. And we exhibited at a show there back in early June. They approached us um, in September and said, hey, we'd like you to build an e-Atlas experience all about Navy Pier that we can run in October, which of course we were glad to do. So we built this experience. Um, they agreed to promote it. And it's been going on in uh, on the pier since October 1st. 
Um, and just last week, we had 182 people took that particular experience. Um, and so that's proven a, a pretty good way to sort of drive activity, drive awareness at the same time is to have a partner who works with us and asks us and, and, and lets us engage us effectively to build an experience for them that their patrons can use. We're also working with the hotel sector because hotels are sort of a natural force, right? There are lots of guests. They're looking for things to do. We can build experiences or have them already made right in the vicinity of the hotel that their guests can take the concierge or the front desk and say, hey, here's the rack card for eAtlas. Here's the QR code, download it right now and you can go on this tour right, right around the corner. That is pretty good. I, I, I was looking, I was saying, uh, everybody goes to Disney, Disney World, but you know, there's various different ways of doing it. And there's various, mm -hmm. if you're black, what should you see at Disney World? If you're Asian, what you should see? Excuse me. Yeah. So you're going to have to do most of the talking on, the, on this show today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, but well. Tell us a little bit more. Keep us in, enthralled and also tell us how this audience can get in touch with you and talk about ideas of coming together. Yep. So um, any member of your audience is welcome to contact me at my email address, uh, which is jmatuzak, M-A-T-U-Z-A-K, at insightfulgames.com. The trick there is I-N-C-I-T-E. FULgames.com. I can also be reached at my mobile number, which is 630-258-9929. And I'd be glad to hear uh, from any member of your audience or, or anybody that they're connected with and talk about ways we can use this app, which is very flexible uh, and help advance their business cause. So Don, as an example of that flexibility, um, EALIS can be used for fundraising events. Let's suppose you're the PTA for a school, right? Well, you could build, uh, you could either build yourself an experience and charge whatever you like. We can build one for you, work out a fee structure, but then uh, a percentage of the money, the you know, the vast majority of the money that that the EALIS experience generates goes back to the fundraising body. In this case, the PTA. A similar example would be schools. Think of Middle schools and high schools, they all have social studies classes. Why not split a social studies class into four or five groups of three or four kids? Have them use contemporary technology that we offer to build their own experiences. So each little student team can build an experience. They'll publish it on our platform. It'll be available through the app. Then again, if, if they want, they can canvas their neighborhood, talk to their parents, their aunts, uncles, cousins, neighbors, and get them to participate in the, in the experience, whether it's free or for purchase. Another way to, to raise awareness about the school, a way to teach kids how to use contemporary technology, and a way to have little informal competitions too within the classroom, right? We see which student team comes up with the eAtlas experience that drives the most activity. So those are just two examples. Think of employee orientations, campus tours, uh, the app, uh, we expect over time effectively becomes a forum and uh, in which people can put up their kid's birthday party and have a special birthday party experience just for that day, just for their kids and their friends. Or they can do fundraising events. They can do employee orientation. They can do employee engagement events. And we've recently released, uh, as recently as this past Tuesday, uh, version four of the app. Uh, which is a significant impro improvement over version three. We've added the ability to add comments, favorites, uh, purchasing uh, through the website is coming uh, over the next week or so. So people can go out to website, see every experience we offer, purchase directly from the website, get a code and, and put the, enter that code in the app and be on their way. Uh, we've added demos, frequently asked questions, um, a better way to search through the experiences. We're now categorizing them by are they are they treasure hunts? Are they guided tours? Are they date nights? Are they drink experiences, nature experience? Are they art themes, architecture themes? So it's very flexible. And um, I'd encourage any of your uh, viewers in the Chicago area to take a look. They download it for free. They can go on some of the experiences for free. And I think they'll find uh, there's a lot of entertainment, insight, 
and uh, information there in every experience. John, let me ask you this question. I belong to a private club called the Union League Club, and we have orientation for for new potential mem members. And also, by the way, a friend of mine, his granddaughter, just won an orientation uh, for a Catholic school. You know, mm -hmm. who choose it. Uh, if you build an orientation um, app. Uh, uh, experience like this, how much does it cost? So it, it would, at present, Don, uh, the good news, it costs nothing. So we're making our platform available to any and all comers at no charge. They simply contact us, we invite them, they accept the invitation and off they go. And the only sort of rules of the road we have is, you know, our basic things, you know, no pornography, uh, no violence, you know, we, we do review the content, um, but really just to make sure that it's not egregious in some fashion, right? So they create an experience about the Catholic school orientation or about a special social event for the granddaughter. And um, they submit it to us. We, we review it uh, very quickly. Uh, we approve it or, or get back to them and say what well, changes we'd like. But usually we're simply approving it because, again, it doesn't contain any egregious content. And then it's available. It's available on the app uh, for everyone to see. Now, there is one feature of the app, which, uh, again, it's not virtual. These are active experiences. So, again, you're not sitting on your couch going to the orientation. You'd have to be in the vicinity of the school. So that's an agreement we came to with Apple and Google to avoid paying their um, very hefty uh, payment uh, commission fees. They charge 30%. We don't have to pay that 30% because ours is a physical activity facilitated uh, by digital goods like the platform, the app itself, maps, video clips, and the like. Uh, how do you get that? Well, what does the school have to do? Do they have to have a special signal out there? Well, what is there? No, I mean, they simply um, they would uh, submit an inquiry to us on our website, again, at playeatlas.com. We would respond to it. We'd invite them to enroll uh, in the portal. They click the link, they're in. There's no cost. It takes about five minutes to get enrolled, and it takes about two minutes to really get started. I mean, no fooling. So from that point, um, they would simply start building their experience, whatever whatever features they wanted to have. If they wanted to do a tour of uh, within their school and do video clips of various classrooms or the gymnasium or whatever it might be, they assemble that content, they put it into the platform, they submit it for approval, we approve it, and then it's live. If they already have this material available, it could take them two to four hours to build an experience. If they have to collect it, it could take 10 hours, 20 hours, but uh, it's not a week long process. It doesn't require a team of people and uh, it can be done as quickly as they're willing to get it done. When I'm on a tour, am I just listening or am I seeing things as well on, on the app? So the, the app itself is displaying what we call points of interest in a given experience. Let's say there are 10 of them. The app will have, a, each of those point of interest will be at a different geolocation. You might start at the front door of a school, go to the corner. In a neighborhood, you might go from a given, uh, the northwest corner of, of Main and, and First Street, and then you're gonna go to the next block and you're gonna move over. But for each of those points of interest or stops along the way in that experience, there'll be a geolocation. And then there'll be a map, a pop-up map, which you can invoke at any time which tells you, okay, here's where you are. Press get directions. It'll show you directions, whether you're walking, bicycling, or in a car. And it'll take you directly to the next point of interest. Now, the only, uh, the only time we don't do that is in some treasure hunts. The, the, the woe guys who build them, they think having a map is sort of cheating, right? So they can choose not to include a map. But if you choose to include the pop-up map, which is entirely the choice of the woe guide, it'll give you a, uh, 
a, a map and, and show you exactly where to go each step of the way. Uh, along at each point, you're going to see a video clip or an audio or hear an audio clip or see a picture. There'll be text which will explain to you some unique facet uh, of that stop. So, for instance, Don, we one of our folks built a sculpture art tour in Chicago. And one of the stops is the Art Institute of Chicago. And you may be familiar with the two giant lion statues yeah. that are on either side of the doorways there. What you probably don't know, and I certainly didn't know until I got involved with the Atlas, is that the artist, a, a Frenchman named Kamal, um, he, he was fascinated with cats and liked to do little cartoons. So on, on the paw of one of those two lions is a little cat cartoon, the artist's name, and the year he um, he made the statue, which I think was 1893. So it's that sort of sort of insider knowledge that the app offers. Uh, you'll learn things like that a Navy Pier, if you look up on the walls of it, you'll find the little Y symbol. Uh, While well, the Y symbol is directly related to Chicago history, it's about the confluence of the rivers and their importance when Chicago was being founded. So each of these experiences will have those little nuggets of information that our woe guides have learned over time and want to share. And that's why I say every experience will have something unique that even a longtime uh, resident uh, of a given place likely doesn't know and will be uh, you know, interesting for them to learn. Can you also do that inside a building? <coughs> I, I know they sell the, the tours inside the Art Institute, but for instance, can you say my 10 favorite pa paintings in the Art Institute are these 10? Yeah, so the, the first answer would be yes, you can, but with a bit of a caveat. Um, the difficulty with what we call interior spaces, museums, art galleries and the like, is that the geolocation function or capability in 4G phones, fourth generation phones, is generally not refined enough to be able to say, okay, you're within three meters of the Monet painting now. And if you move six meters in the other directions, you'll be in front of uh, a Chagall painting or something. Um, now with 5G, uh, as that takes, um, you know, becomes um, installed across the land and across the world, our understanding is that with 5G networks, the geolocation feature within a building will be far superior, and then we'll be able to, to really uh, launch interior uh, experiences. We can do them now. It's just that the map feature won't work as well as we would like it to. So they can be done, uh, but the map feature isn't, isn't quite as potent, if you will. Now, John, are you familiar that the Art Institute fired its 50? 49 Dokens? I am, unfortunately. I um, it, I had to explain this. My uh, mother stays with me. We call her the Grandma Whamma. And uh, so I, she was asking me, but I had to explain that they fired these folks who had been on the staff volunteering, mind you, mm -hmm. for a long time. And um, I recognize this isn't a political show, but I, I find it hard to understand how they could fire those folks just because they happen to be elderly uh, ladies who have the time and the money to be able to do it. Well, have you ever thought about offering them uh, a chance to put their thoughts together on your show, on, your, uh, on each of theirs, and uh, um, capturing their knowledge? Sure. So, Donna, if you could see me under the camera, you'd find me kicking myself. Uh, That's an excellent idea. And the candid truth is I had not thought of it, even though I was aware of, uh, of the issue. And now, thanks to you, Don, I've got another task to add to my list. So, but it's a great task to have. We will reach out to those folks and say, well, the Art Institute may not be interested in your expertise, but we are, and yes. let's put it to productive use. And uh, uh, I just have, uh, um, the only reason I say it is their knowledge is going to be lost and you you have a way of say saving it yeah, yeah. anyway you're absolutely right um we have uh worked in the past with the uh chicago architecture center uh tried to establish relationship with them they also have docents um part of the general rule for docents at 
at, at least in Chicago, in the Chicago area, is that they're never allowed to accept payment for anything. No tips, no payment. They can't benefit monetarily in any way. Now that these ladies have been released from the Art Institute, uh, perhaps we can help each other, and I will certainly reach out to them. Okay. Your website, one last time, and how people can reach you. Uh, the website is playeatlas.com. Um, my name again is John Matuzak. I can be reached at jmatuzak, M-A-T-U-Z-A-K, at insightfulgames.com, I-N-C-I-T-E-F-U-L games.com. My direct uh, mobile phone line is 630-258-9929. And I would be glad to speak with any member of your audience or someone they're connected with and explore how we can help each other uh, through eAtlas anytime. On that note, John, we uh, have to cut it off. But again, thanks Thanks again for coming on. And uh, I, I just think you have the greatest staff. Talk, talk to you soon. Okay, thanks so much, Don. I really appreciate it. Take care.